This offseason has been anything but normal. Multiple superstar wide receivers got traded on draft day. Future Hall of Famers switched teams. This offseason seemingly had it all. However, it's June and the offseason isn't even close to over. On this list alone, there are five former first round picks, including two top two selections that could get traded at the latter part of the offseason. On this list are three quarterbacks, including one that you are definitely not expecting. Which players requested trades? Which players demanded trades? But most importantly, will anyone finally trade for Baker Mayfield? Before we get to the content, we are bringing exclusive content to my Patreon. So if you want to go the extra mile to support the channel, it's patreon.com forward slash microphone. And now that we got all of that out of the way, break! Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? After winning the Heisman Trophy at Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield would go on to be the first overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft by the Cleveland Browns. Since his arrival in Cleveland, Baker Mayfield has for sure not been elite. At the same time, he still hasn't been too bad either. In his last season uninjured in 2020, Baker Mayfield managed to put up 26 touchdowns, just over 3,500 passing yards, and just eight interceptions. At just at the age of 25, the former Heisman Trophy winner even managed to help drag the cellar-dwelling Cleveland Browns to the playoffs and even help them get their first playoff victory since 1995. Baker Mayfield, after the 2020 NFL season, was on top of the world and essentially could do whatever he wanted in Cleveland for free, if that's saying much at all really. The point is that Baker Mayfield was widely considered to be the guy in Cleveland moving forward. And flash forward one year and after a season where he was hampered by an injury in his left shoulder, he's already been replaced by Deshaun Watson. What just happened in one season? Well, to summarize it, because we are thinking of doing a documentary on Baker Mayfield on this channel, let me know in the comment section if you want to see it, but the short version of it is that instead of deciding to get surgery and miss part of the 2021 season to come back fully healthy, Baker decided to tough through a completely torn labrum in his left shoulder, an injury he acquired just two games games into the season. After one tough season where he recorded only 17 touchdown passes to 13 interceptions, he's already been kicked out of the door. If there was any city that would be forgiving to average quarterbacks, you would think of all places it would be Cleveland, but nope, Baker Mayfield is 100% being traded in the future. However, the only question remaining is when and where. If Cleveland does decide to hang on to Baker, his value could increase if there are injuries to other starting quarterbacks. But if they keep him too long, they will be forced to take on nearly $20 million cap hit that his fifth year option brings. After the offseason initially started with insanity, seemingly every quarterback except two, one being Baker, has seemed to find a home, leaving Mayfield with very few options for the 2022 season if he is to be a QB1 next year. For starters, Baker has listed Seattle as his preferred destination, and after a NFL draft with no QBs taken and an offense mainly oriented around running the football, Seattle seems to be the best fit. However, don't count out Carolina. Although the Panthers did draft Matt Corral in the later rounds of the NFL draft, and they have Sam Darnold, are any of those quarterbacks really what Matt Rule is willing to put his job on the line for? The Panthers shouldn't be the favorites to land Mayfield by any means, but that doesn't mean you should count them out either. Baker Mayfield is by far nowhere near a top five or even 10 quarterback. But if he's in the right situation, he can certainly lead a team on a playoff run. But the next player on this list, not only has proven he can lead lead his team to the playoffs, but to a Super Bowl as well. But for some reason, no one, not even his own team, wants to sign him. In 2014, as Tom Brady was entering his age 38 season with the anticipation that he would retire within at least the next five seasons, spoiler, he doesn't, the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick selected Jimmy Garoppolo in the second round of the 2014 NFL Draft. Jimmy didn't play much for the first few seasons of his career. However, in 2016, when Brady was suspended, 
suspended for deflate gate, Jimmy started two games in his place and would throw four touchdowns to zero interceptions. And after winning both of those games had seemingly done enough to earn himself a starting job somewhere else that didn't have Tom Brady. As a result, the Patriots would trade Jimmy G the next season to the 49ers for a 2018 second round pick. The 49ers first move with a quarterback that doubled as a model was to sign him to a hefty five year, $137.5 million contract with nearly 50 million being guaranteed. Chump change in today's NFL, but back then it was a market setting contract. Since arriving in San Francisco, Jimmy G might not have the highlight reel the Niners envisioned that he'd have by now, but nonetheless, he still has led the team to the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship game twice. Jimmy G might not light up box scores in the way other starters in San Francisco might have done in the past, but he still manages to win 70% of his starts. Now, don't get it twisted, Jimmy G is by no means the most talented quarterback available, or the fastest, or the most accurate. He might just lose most handsome because of his old mentor, but still, Jimmy G knows how to win football games. In the NFL, many teams are simply looking for a guy who won't throw the game away, and can win games when the tools are available, and that's what Jimmy G does best. However, if this is the case, how come no one has traded for him? Well, in the wildcard victory over the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy Garoppolo unfortunately sustained an injury in his throwing shoulder. But like any good quarterback in the starting playoffs, except for Jay Cutler, Jimmy G stuck it through and after the postseason, finally had surgery. However, most teams are avoiding Jimmy because by the time he's done rehabbing with his shoulder, minicamp will have already been done and gone. Most NFL teams in the market for a quarterback would like the man they're eventually going to pay upwards of $25 million a season to be available early in off-season programs so that they can build up a rapport with their new teammates. However, with the news that Jimmy Garoppolo wouldn't be available in that time, it's likely most teams, if not all teams, could hold off on trading for Jimmy until they absolutely have to. So far in the offseason, two teams have stuck out with regards in trading for a quarterback, one being Carolina, the other being Seattle, possibly a third being Houston, depending on how they feel about Davis Mills, which in my opinion, he's a pretty solid QB. However, wherever he gets traded, one thing's for certain, he will not be surrounded by a star-studded roster like he was in San Francisco and New England. Unlike the next player on this list, whose entire career never had a supporting cast in front of him to help him thrive, but when he's healthy, he proves he doesn't necessarily need one. Saquon Barkley was the second overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft by the New York Giants, and in his rookie season, he did not disappoint. Saquon, at the young age of 21, ran for over 1,300 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns, while having a league-leading 2,028 total yards from scrimmage, enough to earn him Offensive Rookie of the Year. Not only did Saquon Barkley as a 21-year-old kid run through an entire league full of 30-something-year-old men, but he also managed to do it while not missing a single game. In fact, for the past four seasons, three in college and now one in the NFL, Saquon had not missed a single game. Going into the 2019 season, Barkley was hampered by an ankle injury early. However, after a slow start, he managed to rush for over 1,000 yards and just over 400 receiving yards. Barkley's 2019 campaign was boosted by 300 yards alone in weeks 14 and 15. Going into the 2020 season, everyone was excited to see Saquon finally show off the magic he had shown us in the years prior. However, just two games in, and in a game against the Chicago Bears, Saquon Barkley tore his ACL and had to miss the rest of the season. The 2021 season held much hype for Saquon as it was three whole years since his rookie spectacular, and much was expected from the running back, not only from the team, but by fans everywhere who wanted to see their former number two overall pick thrive. However, in 2021, Saquon only rushed for 593 yards, had just over 800 yards from scrimmage, and once again, faced a nagging ankle injury. After four seasons of high-level football completely unscathed, it was back-to-back -back seasons of something happening that hampered Saquon Barkley from performing. After the hiring of Brian Dable, many rumors around the future of Saquon Barkley have been circulating, and rightfully so. When you consider Dable is a quarterback-oriented first-time head coach, he might just want to move on from an injury-prone running back left from the previous regime, and to start clean in the backfield. Ryan Dable was brought in primarily to help fix Daniel Jones and do to him what he did to Josh Allen, not to help Saquon Barkley return to his peak. However, just because the Giants might be looking to move on from Saquon doesn't mean he's a bad player. When Saquon is healthy and not on some sort of pitch clock, he is absolutely electric, and not to mention a great receiving back, which is always needed in the modern day NFL. Barkley's raw athleticism 
athleticism, although hidden by past injuries, is still there. It just doesn't go away overnight. If Saquon can end up in a good situation, he could potentially not only split carries, but maybe also take over as the lead back once again like he has in the past. If Saquon is to return to the player we all know he can be, then the one thing he needs to do is stay healthy. Unlike the next player on this list, who's a superstar whenever he touches the field already, but still has no clue what team he will be playing for in the 2022 season. Debo Samuel was a second round pick by the San Francisco 49ers in the 2019 NFL Draft. And due to injury, he didn't get the chance to really show out until 2021. Samuel finished his breakout campaign with 1,770 total yards and 1,400 receiving yards specifically. 14 total touchdowns, but an insane eight of them being rushing touchdowns. Debo Samuel promptly after the season gave himself the new title of wideback. And as Niner Nation was distracted by the Pro Bowl first team all pro season they just witnessed, Debo Samuel unfollowed the 49ers on social media and then requested to be traded. According to Ian Rappaport, Debo originally didn't even want an offer from the 49ers. He just wanted to be traded. However, after the draft and the 49ers refusing to trade Debo for the Lions 32nd overall selection, and even the Jets 10th overall pick, Debo eventually refollowed the 49ers on social media, meaning, well, not entirely, but it at least means he's open to the team being in his life in some capacity. The 49ers are trying to keep Debo Samuel on the team, and it's obvious. Unlike some other teams in this offseason, like the Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers, the 49ers are willing to pay their star wide out. However, they probably just wanted to give him the contract and that to be the end of the discussion. However, according to reports, Debo not only wants to get paid like the star wide out he rightfully is, but he also doesn't want to play the running back position anymore. You can't really blame him. A wide receiver in the NFL already takes some pretty hard hits in between the numbers. Now just imagine adding another 100 or so carries of 300 pound linemen barreling down on top of you. Debo Samuel is just making a business decision. He probably just wants to play a long time in the NFL and he doesn't see a sustainable path he could take where he could play the wide back position consistently. Now this is purely speculation but my best guess as to why Debo was so adamant on being traded and now seems to be 50-50 is because at first, Kyle Shanahan probably told him next season he was going to continue to run the ball more like he began to do so in the middle of the 2020 season. And now after he's demanded a trade, he's probably willing to lower his snaps to a number that they can both agree upon. However, if they can't agree or if Debo simply doesn't want to play running back, he could very well find himself out of the NFC West. Samuel, whenever he signs a contract, will probably get paid anywhere from around $23.5 million to $26.5 million a season if you look at all the other wide receivers in the recent market. One thing to keep in mind if your team is the one who does end up trading for Debo Samuel is that when he is on your team, he will not be lining up in the backfield. And if he does, it's to run some kind of route. It's like the next player on this list whose routes seem mature and developed for someone so young, but unlike Debo would probably benefit if he started lining up in the backfield. After a four year career at Florida and having nearly 1,000 yards receiving and 10 touchdowns in his senior season, the New York Giants selected Kadarius Tony 20th overall in the 2021 NFL Draft. Tony's rookie season was about average for a rookie as he only started four games and was able to receive for over 400 yards and no touchdowns. But in week five against Dallas, Tony went off for 189 receiving yards, breaking the Giants rookie record in a game, but not before turning into an absolute demon as he punched Cowboy safety DeMonte Kazee and was promptly ejected from the game. From a bird's eye view, you could be wondering why the Giants would trade a receiver that they just invested a first round pick in just one season ago. However, the more and more you look into the situation, it becomes abundantly clear as to why Tony and New York might want to mutually part ways. Immediately after the drafting of Tony, he skipped the voluntary OTAs, which regardless of being voluntary in name, is expected to be mandatory for rookies and should have been the very first sign of trouble to come. Just one season into his career with Big Blue and Tony already has plenty of reports coming out about him saying, he doesn't study the playbook as much as he should. He's not disciplined in meetings and that his injuries are just the beginning of a long future marred by constant headlines. Tony still has time to turn it around, but after a season of recording more ejections than touchdown receptions, it wouldn't be a shocker to see the Giants give up on the former first round pick very quickly. As soon as the offseason started, the Giants hired Brian Dable. Reports have been flying out of East Rutherford talking about how the Giants have been calling up everyone and their mother trying to find some sort of compensation for Kadarius Tony. This trade makes more and more sense when you consider that
that new head coach Brian Dable and general manager Joe Schoen aren't as attached to Tony as a first round pick as the prior staff was simply because they weren't the ones who selected him. Trade destinations for the wideout going into the second year include the Texans, the Bears, the Falcons, or the Packers, which would be the perfect fit when you consider the team not only needs to replace Devontae Adams somehow, but has also lacked a speedy receiver who could take the top off at any moment. Tony's career isn't over and so far isn't even close to seeing its end. Despite the rocky start in New York, wherever Tony ends up, he still has the chance to rebound and make something out of his NFL career. I mean, the guy was a former first round pick. He definitely could go on to become a perennial pro bowler if all things go his way. However, the next guy on this list so far in his NFL career has had everything he can control go horribly wrong. So many times that you would not believe it. After a standout sophomore season, completing 64% of his passes while throwing 32 touchdowns to just six interceptions, Jordan Love seemed to be solidified as a top five draft pick in the 2020 NFL draft. However, after a rocky junior season, completing just 61.9% of his passes and tossing just 20 touchdowns to 17 interceptions, Jordan Love was once again a question mark in everyone's minds. However, this didn't stop the Green Bay Packers from trading up in the draft and selecting Love 26th overall to eventually take the reins from Aaron Rodgers. But now in 2022, it is abundantly clear that Love will probably never take over as a starter in Green Bay and that his best chance to play high level football is outside the NFC North. At the time of the drafting of Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers had some below average Aaron Rodgers seasons, which overall are still pretty damn good seasons. And in the words of Aaron Rodgers, you know, down years for me, because a lot of times down years for me are career years for most quarterbacks. Oh! So after the career rejuvenation of Aaron Rodgers, which was unexpected by the Green Bay front office, the Packers are left with a certain highly touted backup quarterback that could be the target for many other franchises. And it makes perfect sense. If teams had any questions remaining about Love's consistency or problems coming out of the draft, it would be safe to assume that after two seasons sitting behind a four-time MVP, those issues are probably much more coachable, if not gone completely. And the Packers are willing to unload Love if the package is right. Love, for all we know, could literally be tossing 90-yard moon balls every day in Packers practice. But no matter how well he performs, he simply will not be able to dethrone a reigning back-to-back -back MVP. Teams will be opting to trade for Love rather than other QBs on the market for one simple reason, money. Compared to other quarterbacks like Jimmy G or Baker Mayfield, Love is on a rookie-scale contract and significantly younger than the aforementioned QBs as well. Love still has an entire career ahead ahead of him. At just 23 years old at the moment, he is actually younger than some rookies that came out of this year's NFL draft. And it's safe to say that he would have been the clear cut number one QB in the draft if he were to somehow come out this season. Previously in the video, I mentioned the Texans as a possible dark horse for the two veteran QBs on this list. However, for Jordan Love, I would probably make them front runners alongside the Seahawks seeing as both of the teams skipped on quarterbacks completely in the 2022 NFL draft. However, unlike the next player on this list, Jordan Love has plenty of suitors. The next player is currently acting like one of the top wideouts in the NFL. However, he so far doesn't have much to show. After back-to-back -back seasons with 1,000 plus receiving yards and eight plus touchdowns at Arizona State University, the New England Patriots had seen enough from Nikhil Harry to draft the six foot four, 225 pound physical wideout with the 32nd and final selection in the first round in the 2019 NFL draft. Since his selection, however, Harry in three seasons has recorded less than 600 career receiving yards and has caught just three more touchdowns than the amount of times he's changed his number. Nikhil Harry has obviously been a disappointment for a first round pick and after the 2020 season, he even requested a trade. But after the summer came and went with Harry still on the roster, he suited up for the Patriots in 2021. After another lackluster year, once again, Harry has requested a trade and it seems as if things have gotten so awkward that the New England Patriots might not have any other choice but to trade the 2019 first round pick. Harry has all the physical tools in the world. He's nearly six foot five. He ran a 4.5 40 yard dash and has oven mitts for hands. Whatever it is, whether it's Harry's work ethic or just not being able to follow the Patriot way, he just hasn't experienced the success that he was expected to have in New England. In this off season, Harry's agent said his client and him were looking at a few trade destinations. Let's be honest. 
Are they really? What team could be interested in a former first round pick who for all intents and purposes was a glorified blocking wide receiver? Well, maybe another team who needs a big blocking receiver. And that should answer your question. In the modern NFL, size and wide receivers isn't just used to grab 50-50 balls, but is used to help block for running backs as well. This can be seen in plenty of modern offenses like the Patriots, 49ers, Packers, and even your Super Bowl winning LA Rams. Harry would not only bring good size on the perimeter for blocking purposes, but he could also possess the receiving ability he seemed to have at Arizona State. But hasn't been able to show in New England, Harry will be going into year four of his rookie deal. And the Patriots more likely than not will not be picking up his fifth year option. Meaning if they want any sort of return for their 2019 first round pick whatsoever, they better think about trading him soon. Nikhil Harry will go down as the wide receiver in New England who was slated to succeed and help carry the team post Brady, but in actuality under delivered and will be remembered best as the guy who wore number one as a receiver, but blocked more than he caught in football. And that's our list for the players that are about to be traded. If you think that there is someone that we forgot, let me know in the comment section down below and make sure you check us out on our Patreon, TikTok, and socials in the description as well. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.